I've got the magic eraser, you've got the sham wow, and Scott's got some coke. Draft Brewed Black, Milwaukee's favorite premium beer. More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Bavarians is for your man and you too. Oat Liebs tastes good like a beer should. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentlemen. And now, coming to you socially distanced at our own tables with food and beer on the same tab, sitting down. And don't worry, we won't stand up without a mask on, so please don't yell at us. Greg, Scott, Ali, and Dan. Or some variation of that. Welcome, in everybody. That's starting to not be so relevant out here, at least. Uh, thank you all for joining. Thanks for listening. Cheers. Welcome in the Unfiltered Gentlemen. We're a podcast centered around craft beer, the liquid, the lifestyle, and everything else in between. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome on in. Grab a cold one, settle in. We love interaction, so hit us up. Email us, call us, 805-53-BEER. Uh, and if you're one of our best beer friends forever, welcome back. Hope you're very well hydrated. I am Greg. I'm being joined today by Scott. K Pasta. C. And Flex. Hey, hey, hey. Just wanted to drop in and say, uh, for all you Dodger fans out there, Brewers oh. took three out of four. No. <laughs> Just going to throw that out there. Yeah, the Brewers showed us what was up. In fact, most of Major League Baseball has been showing the Dodgers what's up the last couple of weeks. Uh, don't forget, when you're on those socials, hashtag show us your beers, hashtag Dodgers rule. No, it doesn't work. Mm. Uh, rate and subscribe on, pod- on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is. You're getting your podcast, and don't forget, if you're doing a little shopping on Tavor for the first time, use our code UNFILTERED, get yourself a few extra bucks for your next purchase, and uh, we get a little kick down as well, so check that out. Uh, a lot to get to today, as per usual. It is Cinco de Mayo as the show drops, so See. I've got a, exactly, I've got a beer in honor, I hope it's not offensive, but a beer sort of in honor of Cinco de Mayo. Uh, we got some research to talk about. Some sneaking of beers, some booze news, and much, much more. So I guess really let's uh, let's kick things off with a little bit of hydration. It felt appropriate. I just typed in uh, Cinco de Mayo music into YouTube, and this came up. Totally <laughs> nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> nailed it. Uh, so I am drinking in honor of Cinco de Mayo. Belching Beavers, Viva La Beaver. It's the only Hell yeah. Yeah, sort of Mexican <laughs> beer I had in my fridge. Uh Long 7. Live 5 the beef. Yeah. <laughs> 7.5% has a surprisingly high 4.1 on untapped and a 91 on beer advocate. Says Viva La Beaver is loaded with whoa, <laughs> is loaded with <laughs> notes of creamy yes, peanut is. butter, <laughs> cinnamon and coffee. This decadent milk stout is the perfect dessert beer to finish off your meal and is our highest rated beer receiving numerous gold and silver medals sink your teeth into this liquid chocolate treat i have to say i i got this beer for free i was not looking forward to drinking it i had considered using it for like a will scott pour it out when we get back to in-person stuff <laughs> or i was like this does i don't love the super fake sweet candy you know whatever beers yeah i thought that, you know yeah. The it's, additives, it's the, yeah. Yeah, the Mexican chocolate and all that. Cinco de Mayo. All right, I will give it a try. I am pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I'll give him credit. It is actually not bad. It's a dark chocolate flavor. The peanut butter is not super strong. I definitely get the cinnamon, the coffee, like the warming spices going on. Uh, it's very drinkable, especially for what it is. I don't think I would have two in a row. It's kind of like thick and sticky and, hey uh just... Not normally my jam, but uh, I will give Belching Beaver credit on this one. For as much as I dislike a lot of their flavored stuff, this one's pretty drinkable, mm-hmm. uh, and I will not be pouring it out. So, would you give it that 4 1? Negative, Ghost Rider. Um, <laughs> I would give it a. I don't know, like a 3 5. You know, like drinkable. It's not bad. That's respectable. You know, I think it's what they wanted and what they were going for. Um, I might give it a couple extra points if you could actually taste the peanut butter in it, but the peanut butter is really low. Um, 
Yeah, it, it's not it's not a drain pour, that's for sure. I think three five is a is a good score for this one. I think four one is a little inflated. I don't know where that's coming from. Maybe they're feeding their beer to children. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like kids would like the peanut butter. That's true. The kids would like the peanut butter. So, uh, anyways, uh, cheers and uh, salute to to Belgian Beaver for making one that was actually pretty decent. I've oh my god, <laughs> some of their flavor flavor induced beers like. <laughs> Orchata and the peanut butter, and mm, I had a really awful mango or some fruited IPA from them. It became the joke of the party, trying to pawn it off on people. So uh, not too shabby. And now I will never ever be invited to Belgian Beaver. So there is that. Well, <laughs> you win some, ah. you lose some. Yeah, right. Uh, anyways, all right. So lots to get to. Like I said, uh, first I wanted to bring up how good it feels to get outside and do some goddamn beer research in person we hit up two breweries over the weekend we had up tarantula hill and 14 cannons both local spots uh hit up 14 cannons because they did the uh the pink boots brew in honor of international women's day right the on. wife and nicole of the booze league and a few other friends were part of the brew day so we had to go sample what they made it sounds horrible yeah, it was <laughs> it's a shame that you had to do something like that. Yeah, I had to go do a little quality control over there. Uh, it was a hard day of drinking what actually turned out to be really good beer. So uh, hats off to the ladies who were part of that, uh, our friends over at 14 Cannons. Uh, super cool experience for them yes. to get down to be able to do that. Yeah, I was super jealous. They hit my wife up, and I was like, uh, aren't, aren't we friends? Uh, hello? <laughs> but I guess I'm not a woman. Yeah, I say that... Uh... Unless you're hiding something. <laughs> That's for another show. <laughs> Whole different topic. I'll, yes. Yeah. I'll 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 take off the pasties and show you what's really on the <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah. And we've just <laughs> lost everybody. There it goes. Um, what else? Oh, I think I totally forgot. Uh I didn't give a shout out to our top listening city of last week, which is Elk Grove, California. Cheers. Elk Grove. Elk Grove, California. That's up near Sacktown. Oh, yep. There you go. Flex was silly enough to bring up after the show last week that he was sneaking beers in his shoes. So now I want to know the story behind this, oh, especially wow. in honor of it being your anniversary. Happy anniversary. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Let's, let's hear about how you have to sneak beers past your wife. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, every time I have to sneak beer into the house, it, it always comes after bringing in a large haul previous to you know, some release or a, a, a sneaky dish row we get in here. So after this huge haul, I stopped at a local st- uh, spot to grab a couple cans of beer. Mm-hmm. And I just knew if I walked in that door and my wife saw those two cans of beer, I never would have heard the end of it. You know, oh, you just came home with 24 beers yesterday and now you need two more. Nobody needs to hear that. You should hear my wife every time Tavor shows up. <laughs> another fucking box so you know what i'm talking about you hear my wife every time i show up <laughs> <laughs> another fucking scott yeah are you, are you hit back again every time i uh i get these beers and i gotta sneak them in i, I have no idea what the hell i'm gonna do until i park in my garage <laughs> and i kind of sit there for about two minutes trying to plan it out <laughs> in my head so i finally think of this like you know what get in the front door or in the garage door And I took my work boots off, and I took each can of beer, and I slid in said work boots, and then laid my shirt across the top of the boots, (laughs) just to be certain no beers were spotted. (laughs) And you know what? It it worked 100%. That's what counts. Yes. You know, and then the trick is, well, how do I get them in the boots, and then downstairs into my beer fridge? Because one of them was a, a, you know, heavily fruited sour, and you don't want that. Mm -hmm. Exploded in the work boot. So you just kind of pull the old, uh, do the shit shave shower after work, and oh, <laughs> I gotta go downstairs and get a, <clears throat> get a beer. Slide those bad boys right back out, and down the stairs they go. Every time you drop a beer into the fridge, you just make like a really loud fart sound. <laughs> well, that's the thing, too. I try and uh, even put them in my beer fridge real quietly, yeah. just in case she hears any clanking on the shelves, you know, because <laughs> she's a mom and they hear everything. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing going on down here, just... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, don't come down. Don't. <laughs> you don't want to be any part of this. Uh, no, no, she doesn't. Yeah, the, my wife. Uh, I I do my best to order like when I'm doing Tavor, like I'll order 
you know, a good like four or five beers or something that I know that she would like to kind of like, you know, smooth things over when the yeah, box absolutely. shows up. Because like the doorbell will ring and if I haven't warned her, especially she'll be like, is it beer? Is it another beer shipment? No. <laughs> and usually she's the first one to answer it because she's downstairs. I'm working upstairs. She's like, oh, more Tavor. Where were you going to put it? I don't know. Drink faster. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I got you a couple of fruited sours and this really good sounding lager. All right. Yeah, right on. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'll often get like a new box of Tavor and then, like, you know, say somebody will send me beer or, you know, like Stone will send up some beer. It's like, I swear I didn't order all this beer. Please don't throw it out or yeah, throw me out. Same thing here. Anytime I see a package on the doorstep and she goes, I didn't order anything. Did you order anything? Like, oh, no, to come to think of it, I, I don't think I have ordered anything. Must be Amazon. And then it turns out to be beer, and then I got to explain myself. <laughs> Just tell her it's like microphones for the podcast. <laughs> Give oh, yeah. A microphone. I, I won a contest, so, yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. Won a podcast contest or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. It's a contest yeah. I won, yeah. They keep sending me these damn microphones. It's hope stop. <laughs> I don't know. Yay. She's going to be like, you keep saying they're sending you microphones, but I don't see any of them. <laughs> <laughs> Still have that one shitty one. What's what's going on here? Uh, you know, speaking of free beer, New Jersey. Have you guys heard what New Jersey's doing to entice people for vaccines? Negative. They are offering people who are getting their first vaccine. If you show your card at participating breweries, you will get a free beer after that first vaccine. But they don't have a way to like figure out if you've been to breweries or not. Like they're not stamping your card. I would say, what so, do they have? Like a like a punch. Doesn't seem like it, so uh, get that list of breweries who's participating and have a fun day. Yeah, right on. Just go nuts. Go anywhere with your card? And- anywhere in New Jersey, any of these breweries, a lot of craft breweries are taking part in this to help uh, you know, encourage people to do it, So, which I also love. Like, Look, no matter how you, as a listener, feel about the vaccine, if you're not into getting it, you think one free beer is going to change your mind? <laughs> That being said, I'm going to take my card to New Jersey and just be like, yep. Mm-hmm, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Hello. Hello, everybody. Just, just got mine. I just got mine. Hello. <laughs> yeah. When you think yeah. if you get to seven breweries, you get seven free beers, I'm probably getting it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just convinced them. Here we go, everybody. We're off to Jersey. Flex, this probably won't uh, appeal to you as much, but uh, Scott and I, being Southern California natives, Dodger fans, though it's Ouch. hard to say that this moment Shh, don't uh, tell, yeah yeah do you hear about the dodger dog situation i did not flex I has has it. the the <laughs> the famousness of the dodger dog made its way out to the midwest negative on that one uh i i don't even know what what the significance of a dodger dog is fantastic <laughs> so you go to dodger stadium you get a hot dog it's not a hot dog it's a dodger dog and let me tell you as a dodger fan I don't think I've ever had a worse hot dog in my life. <laughs> is it just a regular hot dog? Just a fucking hot dog. But like, they're not even good hot dogs. They never like, they, they don't have good casing on them. So there's like no snap to it. It's just like a fucking rolled up bologna. <laughs> they, which I know everybody over the age of like 50 is, is yelling at me right now. Like, how hey. dare you? Yeah. <laughs> we love our Dodger dogs. No, you don't. It was either that or bologna. And, and then, you know. In the 60s, you, you chose the dog because in a bun. Like, they're fucking garbage. Anyways, forever they've been made by Farmer John. All of Vin Scully's commercials talked about Farmer John. They are no longer being made by Farmer John. <gasps> what? Look out. What? Yeah. Farmer John, Dodgers did not renew their contract. Farmer John is now the official hot dog of uh, the football club in LA. Boy, did they downgrade. Whoa! <laughs> I mean, by football, I mean soccer. Yes, yes. That yes. kind of football, yes. Very, very downgrading there. Uh, and this company is called Papa Can Tell Us. They're another local hot dog manufacturer out here in the LA area who will now be making the Dodger dogs. And the Dodgers swear they're using the same recipe. Don't you worry. People who love this garbage in a bun, it will still taste like a Dodger dog. So they're using the same recipe as in what the Farmer John hot dogs were or the recipe of hot dog in a bun? <laughs> yes and yes. I, I don't understand how you can change companies but have the same dog. I mean, the Dodgers own the rights to Dodger Dog and whatever recipe that was, so they brought it to a new company. They've been like Farmer John for like a hundred years. I looked it up, and I think it was like 1972. Really? It, it's been for a really long time. 
See, and I was getting psyched that you guys were actually going to get a like a good tasting hot dog. God no! If you want a good hot dog, go mm. to fucking Costco. <laughs> <laughs> Way better than Dodger dogs. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> do you guys at uh, was it Brewer Stadium or whatever you call it? Uh, uh, do you guys have any American Family Insurance? That that's what it is now. It's not even cool like Miller Park anymore. Oh. All right, so hey, at Brewer Stadium, <laughs> <laughs> do you guys have any like famous like Brewer dogs or Brewer somethings? Everybody usually shows up for the helmet nacho. Mm. You get like the adult size plastic helmet mm-hmm. flipped upside down, and then they do like the huge uh, nacho grande inside the mm. the baseball helmet. Okay, that so sounds pretty good. famous for that. And then uh, they also do a little bit uh, smaller scale helmet of cheese fries too. Ooh. Ooh. I like me some cheese fries. Yeah. Nothing. How could I forget this? <laughs> Nothing is more signature at Brewer Stadium than the Long Island iced tea. Oh. Oh, really? Yes, absolutely. It is. So, uh, a couple shows you were talking back, I said uh, the 16 ounce cans of beer are $11. Oh, yeah. And we got mad at you because that's so cheap. Yeah. It's cheap <laughs> as shit. These Long Island iced teas are $13. Oh, that's just straight alcohol. Yeah, that's just straight out. So you're just getting way more bang for the buck. And uh, now they just reopened the restaurant in the stadium where you can go order these drinks and then take them back to your seat. Mm. So that's really going to really gonna get the fan morale back going. Yeah, really going to up the BAC in that stadium. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. So before we find out what Flex is drinking over there, uh, let's do a little old-timey word of the week. And that is foxed. Foxed. Foxed is intoxicated. So you go to whatever that stadium was called, have a couple too many Long Island iced teas, and you get pretty foxed. You get foxed out of your mind. Foxed up. That's right. Does anybody actually remember the name of the stadium out there? Like, do you guys? Uh, it sucks now compared to what it was. What do you, what do you as a local call it? Uh, I, I, I can never stop calling it Miller Park. It's been Miller Park for like the last 20 years, uh, up until this past year when... It's now AmFam Stadium or something <laughs> like that. It, it's just the ring is gone. And, you know, it, when you're the Brewers, you play at Miller Park. You know, right. beer yeah. is beer is beer. That's just like out here. It, Angel Stadium is always the big A. I don't care who owns it or, or where, the, where the Ducks play. It used to be the Pond. And then, like, Honda bought it. It's the Honda Center. It's like, no one calls it the Honda Center. It's the fucking Pond. <laughs> or the forum. It's, a, it's, a, it's a shame when stuff like that happens where somebody gets rights or buyouts and contracts of they just ruin something good right or like portland it was like the rose center the rose arena and then it became yeah. like the moda center or something stupid like that no one's gonna yeah, remember that, that sounds so stupid yeah. yeah it does so uh anyways speaking of baseball let's make a call to the pen find out what flex is drinking over there <laughs> Beer. All right, today I am drinking Drecker Brewing's Rainbow Sherbert Sunday Sour Chunk. Mm. This is actually kind of ridiculous here. It is a (laughs) 4.42 collective on untapped. Okay, Uh, that's pretty high. 4.42, that's huge. And it is a uh, Sunday Sour loaded up with lemon, lime, orange, raspberry, guava, marshmallows, lactose, sea salt, and of course, big old scoops of rainbow sherbet for a fruity, decadent, chonky, and sherberty leap into a world of <laughs> devout silliness. That description was devout silliness. Indeed it was. Do we need to add leather? Was that one in your shoes or <laughs> <laughs> with a hint of toe jam? <laughs> add, add all the leather he wants, cat. <laughs> um so this thing I mean it is banging with uh a lot of citrusy, like real sour citrus, lemon lime on the on the nostrils there. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's can't a see, oh, but that's a all pretty that beer. Pulpiness on the the rim of the glass there. Yeah, you, you gave yourself a rimmer, <laughs> you know. And on the palate, <laughs> you're getting big time with those lemon lime flavors. Hmm. Not overly sour. Mm-hmm. It's got that real real good amount of sour where you're not puckering. But you're, if you like sour stuff, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna absolutely love this beer. Oh, the marshmallows in there really uh, soften it up and really mm-hmm. really make it smooth on the palate. It's just, it's just an absolutely delicious beer. 
I wonder if by adding ice cream straight into it, like I wonder if that uh, ups the ABV at all. You know, yeast like sugar, that's how alcohol is created. Correct. Um, I don't know. That's something you're going to have to ask the scientist. Come on, nerds. Let us know. Um, thanks for asking. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, okay then. <laughs> Very nice. I mean, look, I've never been disappointed by anything from Drecker. They're always turning out some great stuff. So, no, they they really don't don't miss ever. Really, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I drink a lot of them, a lot of them. Well, it sounds muy delicioso. Yeah, I wish you could have one. Me too. That's rude of you not to share. <laughs> I'd share my weird beer I'm drinking. <laughs> I gotta stop talking shit about Belgian Beaver. Uh, all right, very good. Well, in honor of Cinco de Mayo, we have Cinco de Mayo fun facts. Oh. Because if we're going to risk being sued for using this song, we might as well use it twice. Yeah. Of course. I, I just love how festive you've become. Yeah. But if you need to know one thing about me, it's I'm very festive for holidays and stuff. Uh, so this is 13 Things You Probably Didn't Know About Cinco de Mayo, brought to you by Tastemade. What, I've never even heard of this website before. Uh, number one, Cinco de Mayo is not Mexican Independence Day. That I knew. I knew that as well. Uh, contrary to what some might think, the Mexican Independence Day is actually September 16th, not May 5th. Uh, number two, the holiday celebrates a much smaller military victory. And a much more obscure one. May 5th is the anniversary of the Battle of Puebla in 1862, during which the guerrilla troops of General Ignacio Seguin Zaragoza fought off Napoleon's troops during the Franco-Mexican War. Uh, Number three, the popularity of Cinco de Mayo in American was a political move. President Franklin D. Roosevelt enacted something called the Good Neighbor Policy, which was meant to improve relations with Latin American countries and communities. It was under this policy that Cinco de Mayo began to pick up steam in the 50s and 60s, eventually becoming a national holiday, drinking incessantly to improve in international relations. Why not? Uh, number four, and this was interesting, Canada celebrates Cinco de Mayo in a very unique way. They have a tradition called skydiving boogie and it involves aerial acrobatics and an annual air show. Is that like a, like a big thing? I guess. I guess the Canadians love their... Cinco de Mayo skydiving. There you go. This should come as no surprise. Los Angeles has the biggest Cinco de Mayo celebration. LA celebration is even bigger than the festival that's in the Mexican city of Puebla. Wow. Number six, tequila was once thought to be nectar of the gods. I believe it. (laughs) I I had some for lunch today and it was, I mean, (laughs) just top notch. Absolutely top notch. Feeling godly over there? Ah, just a little bit. It's it's a problem I have. (laughs) Not surprisingly, 47% of all drinks ordered on Cinco de Mayo are margaritas. Uh, Number seven, other historical historical events also happen on May 5th. Uh, Among these events were the opening of Carnegie Music Hall and the launch of the first American manned flight into space in 1961. Uh, Number eight, one Arizona town celebrates with chihuahua races... (laughs) <laughs> Woo. Number nine, the Battle of Pueblo placed a foreign emperor in Mexico. Although Mexican troops won the initial Battle of Puebla, uh, French troops came back strong, eventually took over Mexico for a short amount of time. They instituted Emperor Maximilian of Austria, who was essentially a puppet through which European nations could control Mexico. Yeah, I think it was actually almost a year later. Oh, was it? I think so. It could be very, very wrong. You're more right than I am. So there's that. Uh, Number 10, Cinco de Mayo is the biggest day of the year for avocados. And I bought one today. There you go. I love me some avocado. I had a guacamole for dinner. So there you go. Uh, Number 11, 10 states consume more tequila than any others. So if you're going to party for Cinco de Mayo, get yourself to Either New York, Ohio, Georgia, Florida, Illinois, Colorado, Nevada, California, Arkansas, and or Texas. Those are the big tequila consumers for Cinco de Mayo. Uh, number 12, mole poblano is the authentic Cinco de Mayo dish. If you want to do Cinco de Mayo right, put down the taco. The traditional ju- dish eaten in the town of Puebla on their big holiday is mole poblano. 
Uh, invented in the late 17th century, mole is a thick, if you guys don't know, sauce made with chocolate, chili peppers, and other spices, and is fucking delicious. See, and I'm not a fan of the mole. Not a fan, huh? Nah. I'd love me some tacos. I'd be very happy with some tacos. I, I would go to a restaurant and I had a burrito that would have it spread on it. Mm. And mm-hmm. uh, not not a fan of the mole. Not your jam, huh? Not my jam and not one bit. Okay. Well, tacos are my favorite food group of all time, so I, I'm just as happy eating tacos for Cinco de Mayo. Uh, number 13, finally, beer sales generate around $658 million for Cinco de Mayo alone. So if you're not a margarita person, you can contribute to the nearly $700 million of sales in the beer industry in the week leading up to Cinco de Mayo. I there will join it. in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, they say that the, the beer sales for Cinco de Mayo competes every year with uh, the Super Bowl. Holy shit. They didn't say who wins or who loses, but it's, it's very close. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's some you know, competition. The funny, the funny yes, thing about Cinco de Mayo is they talk about you know how small of a celebration it was because everyone thinks it's the Mexican Independence Day. Mm-hmm. So, and everybody says when you go down to Mexico, they have no idea. Like, it's not that they don't have an idea, but they just don't celebrate anything down there. <laughs> so, my wife and I on our honeymoon, we went to uh, Playa del Carmen. So, we were talking to the shuttle guy who was taking us from the airport to the hotel. We we're like, oh, yeah, we're really excited to be down here, you know, and with Cinco de Mayo. And the look the guy gave us was like, <laughs> he was like staring through us. Like, he was just like, yeah, Cinco de Mayo. Like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. Nobody celebrates that shit here. Thanks, gringo. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's exactly what I felt like. So we just kind of like looked at each other like, all right, I guess, uh, I guess we're not excited about that. Yeah, that's not why we're down here at all. No, I was just no joking. not at all. Yeah. Yes. Only the gringoist of the gringos would come down here for Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, gotcha, bro. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's funny. Yeah, who knew? Who knew? On to some more news. A man was arrested for DUI after crashing into a house. According to this accident report, oh, God, what a name. Yannick Tatakulia Mbabi. Perfect. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, he crashed into a house i'm not that sorry nailed Uh, it again (laughs) 60 percent of the time it works every time uh who is the ripe old age of 19 was headed north on west 9th street around 3 a.m sunday when he lost control of his pontiac vibe sweet ride bro (laughs) the vehicle then crashed into the porch of 1522 west 9th street and oh god mbabi backed out and parked on the street as if nothing would happen of course. The house jumped out in front of him. Right, yeah. I, I love that. Uh, the cops later found out um, and rested for DUI. But I love the whole, like, I'm just going to back out and <laughs> leave this here. Just here. Park right no in front of the deal. house here. Mm. Yeah, hit a house and back up and think, like, hey, I hope nobody saw that. Right. And not like, I'm going to go around the block and park it. I'm just, I'm just going to park it right here on the street. Yeah, they fine. won't fucking realize it. It'll be great. Kind of makes you wonder what his uh, BAC was. Probably quite high. And he was 19, maybe? Yeah. (laughs) You're that young, you don't know what you're doing. But this begs the question, like, do you guys have any stories where, like, you got drunk, you did something stupid, and you're like, oh, I'll just cover this up, and no one will ever notice? Hmm. I can, I'll kick it off, you guys think about it. This isn't quite that, but there was a time I was at a bar drinking with some friends, and there's one thing I hate, it's doing shots of tequila, because guaranteed, A, I'm going to get hammered, like, beyond necessity but b like i will most likely throw up and sure enough they keep handing me shots and it hit me i was like oh this is this is not gonna end well so i quickly made my way to the bathroom where the stall was uh out of order and my options were limited (laughs) and i threw up into the urinal and it was like well shit i don't luckily no one saw me i was like i need to get the fuck out of here so i'm washing my hands i'm cleaning i'm kind of washing my face and some guy walks in and sees it, and he's like, oh, what the fuck? I was like, yeah, man, that asshole just walked out of here. Like, who <laughs> fucking does that? Like, oh, my God, who would throw up in a urinal? What a dick. I gave him <laughs> I gave him a piece of my business. But, <laughs> and I was like, what a dick. And the guy's like, yeah, that's fucked up. I was like, so fucked up. And I immediately got out of there and continued drinking. That might be my favorite story ever. <laughs> that is just obnoxious. <laughs> Completely obnoxious. I'm such a dick. But you're our dick. That's true. <laughs> I'm just glad I belong to someone. <laughs> or people. 
Flex, what about you? You got any uh, drug oh, cover ups? Geez. Let's see. It was one time uh, me and my friends had just moved out and uh, we kind of threw this huge, not a housewarming party, but uh, just, hey, we kind of got a new place and let's all just get pretty fucked up. Well, somebody had the great idea to bring a bottle of wine. Mm. You know, we're 21 years old, so it's not good wine. Two buck chuck. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Maybe it was Boone's Farm. I don't remember. Mm. You guys probably don't have two buck chuck out there. No. I that's, think that's a Trader Joe's California thing. Uh, I'll have to check that out the next time at Trader Joe's. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's called two buck chuck. I mean, it's called Charles Shaw, but up oh, until okay. like a couple years ago, it was $2 for a bottle. So two buck chuck. That's what our Boone's Farm. You, do you guys have Boone's Farm? Probably. I think so. Because that I think runs about two to three bucks a bottle, and it's like juice, basically. <laughs> right. Juice with alcohol added to it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, so, <laughs> right. so your yeah, classy so we, uh, party with wine. Yeah. So we threw this huge party, and somebody ended up spilling an entire glass of wine. And when you're 21 years old, you don't do that six ounce pour shit. You know, it's a full glass of wine. I still don't. Well, yeah. So the the funny thing about this is the, the Christmas before we moved out, my parents had gotten me ShamWows. You guys remember ShamWows? Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, just an indestructible, <laughs> absorbing rag, uh, just supposed to be the, the best thing ever. And the guy in the commercial gets out red wine out of a carpet. <laughs> So I'm like, all right, we got to fucking do something before somebody sees this. So I go to the room, my room, grab out my ShamWow, and I dab the hell out of this red wine with the ShamWow, and it took out every ounce of red wine in that goddamn carpet. <laughs> so it fucking worked? Wow. It, it worked 100% like it was supposed to. You should oh, be on a God. commercial. Serious. And, you know, if that guy didn't get beat up by a woman, you know, <laughs> I, I, I would love to do a commercial. Uh, and he fucking deserved it, too. But, no, he, yeah, but he cleaned up the blood so nice. Right. <laughs> With the ShamWow. With the sh- ShamWow. <laughs> ShamWow cleaned up my blood. Oh, so, yeah, who so knew those the things worked? Night, that, uh, I mean, that that was just going, everyone just, ShamWow. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking amazing. Nice. Yeah. I know, Scott, what about you? Any uh, drunk cleanups? Um, I can't think of any cleanups. Um, the only thing I can think of is where I was, me and a buddy of mine went out and I was hammered and I had to, you know, of course, take the a hell piss. you say. Yeah, I know. I know. It's one, the one and only time. Yeah. Um, I, I was hammered, it. had to take a piss. So I'm in the bathroom. All these guys are in there like talking and shit and I'm not paying attention. I have no idea what they're saying anyway because I'm just barely standing up taking a piss. And my buddy comes in and he grabs me and he says, let's get the fuck out of here. I'm like, dude, you know, what's, what's your problem? What's going on? He says, let's, let's go. We got to go. It's time to get, it's time to go home. Let's go. So anyway, you know, I just like, you know, finish my business and he's dragging me out. And I'm like, what's going on? He goes, dude, you're standing right there in the middle of a, a cocaine drug deal going down with Coke. <laughs> and I said, I don't know what's going on. He goes, we need to get the fuck out of here before the cops show up and all this. I didn't know. I had no idea what's going on. At this the hearing, he wasn't. Went, yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah. yeah. Whoops. Yeah. That is wild. Absolutely wild. I did think of one more. No cocaine in this one, unfortunately. Damn uh, it. Flex reminded me. Speaking of red wine, here's a commercial for uh, those Mr. Clean, like pad things. You know, the yeah, Mr. the Clean. magic erasers. Mad. Thank you, magic eraser. You're welcome. Had a little had a little party over here. Uh, I won't name any names, but someone got real hydrated on wine and got real excited it was a weird mix of emotions that came out of nowhere and through their luckily mostly empty glass of red wine at the ceiling Ooh, wow yeah so first i was like fuck did it hit the brand new couch this is like the week we had just gotten a couch and new floors missed the couch and then i look up ceiling just has these red dots oh. all over <laughs> it's like a scene from dexter yeah. And uh, luckily, Nick was around. He's like, oh, do you have a magic eraser? I was like, yes. Yes, I do. He's like, fucking get it. And he goes, he's so funny. I get that and like a step stool and I'm up there like, you know, blot, you know, trying to wipe it off. He goes, do not rub. Whatever you do, don't rub. Blot. Just two drunk guys cleaning up some wine on the ceiling. <laughs> don't, don't rub. Blot. Make sure you blot. You'll rub all your paint off. Do not rub that thing. I was like, 
who throws wine glasses? That's crazy. <laughs> oh, good times. Good, good times. I heard those things were were good, though. Oh, yeah, it fucking worked. It did take yeah. off a little bit of paint. Uh, did it really? really? Yeah, a little, wow. just a smidge. You can, you can see, like, if you look up when the light's hitting it, you can see where I had wiped with the magic eraser. Next time, mm. listen. <laughs> I know. Well, it's good thing mm, you mm. stopped me when he did. I've actually used it on a car before. I uh, I used to have a white car, and I was parking, and I just it was so fucking tight. I barely got this guy. It had an old Jeep, and it had like that black plastic all the way around it. Yeah. And I just barely scuffed up my door with this black plastic, and so I get out and I look zero damn. You can't even see like his plastic looks fucking perfect. There's a black streak all the way down the side of my white car. Ugh. I was like fuck. So I got home. I was like, well, let's try this magic eraser. I didn't know it took paint off. So I got the magic eraser, <laughs> and it fucking worked. And look, I don't think it took any paint. Like, luckily, the clear coat must have done its job or something, because it came right off, and there was no, like, line of, I used to have paint here or anything like that. Worked fantastic. You are a walking Mr. Clean magic eraser <laughs> ad, yeah. Greg. You and your sham wow, and me and the magic erasers. We're going to get <laughs> rich over here. Look out, Hollywood. Yeah, here we come. If you're yeah, up I, at 3 a.m., you might see us. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the magic eraser, you've got the sham wow, and Scott's got some coke. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're something. up at 3 a.m. That's a great <laughs> combination, yes. <laughs> That's how we, how we stay up for the infomercials. <laughs> uh, I'll leave everyone with this one. Drunk Tennessee man accused of swinging colostomy bag at officers. <laughs> 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 Let me compose. <laughs> Police said that Nicholas Newhart was drunk and holding a bottle of beer blocking the outside emergency exit door at Kid Rock's Steakhouse at 221 Kid Broadway in Nashville. <laughs> yes. You just want to meet Kid Rock? Right. <laughs> Who doesn't? Uh, Kid Rock security told the defendant to leave the outside door area, but the, he refused to leave. Security flagged down police to assist in getting Newhart to leave. Newhart took out his colostomy bag from the inside of his front pants area and started to swing the bag, hitting two of the officers with his feces. No. No. Police says Newhart was drunk, what, when taken into custody without any further incident. He could not stand straight on his own. His eyes were bloodshot and glossy, wet looking, (laughs) with the smell of alcohol coming from his person. He's been charged. (laughs) Yeah. He's been charged with assault on the two Metro police officers that he hit with his feces, uh, disorderly conduct, and public intoxication. Wow. That mm-hmm. is, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of left speechless over here just thinking about how gross it would be to get hit with the uh, shit out of a colostomy bag. <laughs> Who knew that happens outside of Florida? Probably was from Florida and probably moved. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly Which leads me to this. Why don't you guys tell us about a time when you were drunk and you were swinging your shit at, it, at officers? All right, oh, Flex, I got a lot go of stories first. about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have time? Yeah. Laundry list. <laughs> Laundry list of shit flinging stories. <laughs> Jesus, what a! I was gonna say what a shit show. That was too easy. What a! <laughs> what a horrible! Nailed day. it. Theme yeah. of the night. That was Greg <laughs> nailing it. <laughs> Didn't even mean to. Oh God, very good. Well, uh, before we forget, hi Vanessa. Hi Vanessa. There it is. Uh, I'll hit some music. We'll get on out of here. Find us at theunfilteredgentleman.com. Find us on the socials, The Unfiltered Gentleman. Find Flex at Flex Me Beer with those underscores in between each word. Give us a call, 805-53-BEER. That's 2337. And our email is theunfilteredgentleman at gmail.com. I do believe that's everything. So thank you for hanging out with us. Hope you're staying very well hydrated. And hey, if you got any uh, drunken cleanup stories you'd like to share, please do send them our way. Uh, do not send us colostomy bag stories. We prefer not to read those on the air. Send the stories. Don't send the bags. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Words to live by. <laughs> so on that note, good night, everybody. 